Well, when you can just be honest and real with people instead of trying to put on a religious face, it's, right. uh, it's a lot better. Absolutely. It's a better life. It is all around. <laughs> that being said, <laughs> Black Top Black Pulpit. Black Top Pulpit. I won't be boxed again. <laughs> <laughs> so, Black Top Pulpit, we'll talk about the sermon. We get down to the Black Top, and uh, hopefully, people tune in and and listen to us just uh, babbling on. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so what did you think about the sermon today? It was right on on the mark. Um, I know we've talked about spiritual gifts and charismatic theology, and you know, un- unfortunately, like oftentimes pitting it against Reformed theology and stuff like that. So I wasn't sure where you'd go um, when when it was like. So what's the popular thing to do, right? It's it's to kind of just brush off the tongues issue as quote unquote issue, as like oh it's just preaching that's all it is, like and that's that's where like yeah. most most pastors well and it's it's so weird because most route. people most people I've heard go through this passage they go through this passage and they'll say something to the effect of tongues is a gift that God gives to missionaries. Or in a foreign country around people mm. who speak a different language yeah. to cause those people to hear in their native language so that people are converted to the gospel. First of all, God doesn't need that missionary. Right. Okay. It's, no, he, a dream and then boom, he's bringing natives to him. Okay. So first of all, God doesn't need that missionary. Second of all, Paul's actually writing to a local church for people practicing the gift of tongues within the context of that local church. The church at Corinth, who are all of the same culture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's not writing to missionaries. Right. Well, unless you're of the Spurgeon persuasion. Every Christian is a missionary or an imposter. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's writing to just regular church people. Yeah. So you opened up a, a rabbit hole. And I'm going to totally give you like the, 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 the direction on this one. Because <laughs> it's a... It's another controversial topic, and it's not on par with, or it's not on topic with First Corinthians fourteen. Okay. It's a big rabbit trail. But you mentioned like the, the rabbit need, hopped a long way. Yeah, the, the, the long hop and rob, rabbit. <laughs> you mentioned the need for God for a missionary, and and I just thought of a recent conversation I had about people violating missionaries specifically violating their conscience surrounding the, 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 the whole, are we still using code words? when we say the, um, whatever the, the vaccines, um, violating the conscience to get the vaccine, to go back to the countries that they are in so that they can do the work because they need, they, they need to do whatever is possible to get there and get the word to these people who are dying without the word. I just thought of that in rabbit hole, we could see if we have time for it. We could go down it now, whatever. I leave, I leave it up to you and grab a pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when it comes to that, what happens when in order to get to an area that needs the gospel proclaimed, you have to violate your conscience in order to get there? And we can just apply it more broadly than that, right? Um, Even if it's not the vaccine, if you have to do something else that's against your conscience too Mm -hmm. in order to get to where you're going, share the gospel. If you have to lie to get to where you're going, to share the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a bona fide sin um, if you have to kill to get to where the gospel needs to go. Do you do it just for the sake of the mission's work? And, I, well, I think the answer to that question is our first priority is not to sin against God. Right. Right. Uh, so if we are convicted about something like a vaccine and we believe it to be a sin to get a vaccine, our first priority is to honor God with our lives, to live humbly and quietly, to do the work where God where God has us. If we can't get somewhere, we can't get somewhere. The Holy Spirit kept Paul from getting to Asia. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Paul wanted to go there. There were barriers, and Paul recognized 
the Holy Spirit's placed in those barriers. Like God is sovereign over those barriers. One. Two, God is sovereign over that foreign people. So God will reveal himself when he wants. Uh, God doesn't need missionaries. But Andrew, I mean, if this missionary hey. doesn't get there, these people are going to perish apart from the gospel. False. Ha! Bears All right. beats yes. Battlestar Galactica. Fantastic. I love it. <laughs> that's that's the most biblical answer I think we need for today. Quoted Jim Halpert, who was pretending to be Dwight. All right. <laughs> yes. No, no God, doesn't, God doesn't need a missionary to go proclaim the gospel to the lost. Right. Um, the Great Commission was completed in the book of Acts. Uh-oh. It was completed by the Holy Spirit. Mm. Right? We continue on today because Christ has not returned, but it was finished in the book of Acts. Right. Man, that is another area of, of again, this is plain reading. Like, don't skip over it when we see the completion of all nations being reached. Um, it's there. It's another, it's another area that I, I know it's motivating. I know it motivated me when I started, like, years ago thinking like lord how am i going to serve you and it's like oh well you you need to reach the nations and and again not saying we don't we don't go to the nations we do absolutely Mm -hmm. and especially if you have a burden or desire to do it well but that's right that was like a motivating (coughs) factor for me too but we we can't just say you know what it it's a motivating thing that we like to say to, to get people encouraged to go or to stay in these difficult places because Man, I got a lot of friends that are in these hard places, and and I I I am not like diminishing the the difficulty of the lifestyle mm-hmm. or the whatever whatever you're putting aside of the things that you can have for yourself, and you forego them for the yeah. sake of reaching these people. That's awesome. Yeah. As we record this, it's a uh-huh. Sunday night. Today is January 9th. Yesterday, January eighth, yeah, was the anniversary of Jim Elliott's martyrdom. Mm. Okay. Mm. One of the greatest missionaries, yep. one of the greatest sacrifice for each a tribe. Right. Yeah. He was also one of the greatest believers in the sovereignty of God. Yeah. He was a Calvinist. Huh. Uh, he believed that God didn't need missionaries. Right. But he was called to be a missionary by God. Just like God doesn't need preachers. Right. But I'm called to be a preacher. Right. By God, yep. um, He doesn't need me to do what I do, but I want to be faithful to His calling in my life because He does deploy all of us. He does that. Yeah, uh, He does that by His grace, and we serve in response to His goodness, not because oh, it's up to me to win everybody. Right? No, I, I will try to persuade people as much as I can. Right? But ultimately, that's the Holy Spirit, man. Now, see that did loop into the passage because Absolutely. we're talking about spiritual gifts. That's it. <laughs> And God equipping people to do what equipping He is calling call to do. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think I think that's such an important, again, another important truth to to Harold. Man, Jim Elliot, like the that you would call a, a famous missionary. I mean, there's books about him. There's mm-hmm. you know people. You, you say that name anywhere in the world, and the chances are that somebody's gonna. Oh yeah, people, I've heard that. That someone's gonna know him. At least somebody has heard the name. Yeah. yeah. And what, what, I mean, what are Calvinists doing, doing missions work? I mean, I thought we were like always responding just to God. <laughs> we're responding to God's goodness. Yeah. Yeah. We do that. <coughs> I thought we were just cold head knowledge, theology loving, mm-hmm. you know, kind of some, rigid some type. Some are. <laughs> I hope that we're not, but some are. No, I don't think we are. And, and that, is where, like your question was, I was, I was happy with, not man, just being just being right in line with you again, um, because this is one of those passages and you know just areas of theology that I've wrestled through personally as well. I really wanted to keep you guessing <laughs> about my thoughts on tongues before I got here. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think I've gotten enough insight into into some of our conversations, but didn't know the hard line that you'd make and. And when you say something plain, and this is what I love about what you do too, when it comes to, you know, I'm not putting my bias into the text. Um, you you expounded on the simple Greek word that was used there. Was it glossae? 
or glossy glossy yeah. glossy or a, well if that's um, whether you pronounce it that way or not you know i just say it with confidence yeah glossy <laughs> it was glossy, glossy. <laughs> no ten, eight, eight by ten color glossy pictures <laughs> <laughs> you know that spiritual gift glossy the glossy <laughs> yeah I, and that's where it is is like we, we take the word and we we exposit it so it's like doesn't matter what I believe. This it is matters what the, what the text says. says. That's it. And this is what it says. And when you when you exposited this text, you just said, you know what? This is the word that's used and this is what it means. And I'm not going to change that because it's uncomfortable for me. I'm not going to say, no, there's no angelic tongues. There's no gift of speaking in tongues. You know, this is this is a... Uh, either a glossed over passage for a lot of, you know, either... Or explained you, away. Yeah, you know. talk about the, the conservative people or the reformed, you know, groups were very, like, confessionally reformed. And, and you get to a passage like this and it's like, no, I'm not going to shy away from it. It's just what it is. Mm-hmm. Tongues is a gift of the Spirit. No, it still doesn't mean... I want a bunch of people causing confusion, talking gibberish in church. Which is also addressed by Paul. I know. It's almost it's like God is a God of order. Like in the things that he's done. That's right. <laughs> and yeah, that's what I, I, that's what I was appreciative about it. You know, as far as just, just what was, what was taught, what, what is taught here and, and that you were faithful with the text and, and we don't have to have a more controversial blacktop episode here as we argue about the topic. <laughs> Which would be fun too at some point, Andrew. Can you at least? No, let's not. Let's not. Let's not false <coughs> teach or teach poorly just so we can have a, an interest, a more interesting blacktop episode. <laughs> well, you want me to defend a position I don't take? Yeah, just not in the pulpit. Man. <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> I love how love is the thing prioritized, mm. even above. Every spiritual gift is like first love. And then when you figure out how to live in this love that abides with you, right? You figure out how to live in love. Yeah. Then you'll be able to practice your spiritual gifts well, whatever they are. Hmm. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. And any of the gifts that you might exercise, as Paul said, are are useless mm-hmm. um, so i mean that i won't oh we didn't do last week's day either did we i guess we could kind of yeah we can back a little overlay chapter 13 and 14 i mean if you look at you know just the the truth of what love is <coughs> and the reality of of the context of these couple passages i mean you can you can have if you want to you know phrase it different ways you could have you can have all kinds of gifts and empowering by God. Supernatural, like, mm-hmm. empowering gifts. And it be useless to the body. Useless yeah. in your life. Mm-hmm. Because you don't, you don't exercise the greatest gift that Paul says, which is love. That's, that's, that's one of those profound things that we don't want to get all googly-eyed about because... You know, men don't sit in a den smoking cigars. Well, and talking you read, about love. you read through what you read through what love is. It is not some googly eyed, right. twiddle pated thing. Right, right. Like that is a manly way to live. Yeah. Self denial, mm. not holding people's wrongs against them. Like how strong mm. do you have to be to do that? No I'm kidding. For real. Yeah. Self denial. Um, one Self-sacrifice. of the sacrifice. One of the life changing qualities in people mm-hmm. you know you don't seek your own right. that's, that's huge that's that huge. makes a difference in your own life and that every every person you touch around you mm-hmm. uh, that's 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 uh, one of the profound things i think that we get from chapter 13 um and leading into 14 it's like yeah that's, i enjoyed it. just both both chapters and in, and in, in the the sermon so um, is there anything particular I don't know that jumped out to you um, besides what did you say the oh, what did you just say 
Psh, I, I don't know. Love. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we got into it. Yeah. The uh, the rugged manliness of true love. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Here we get toward the end of the passage. And uh, Paul... That's 1 Corinthians 14, verse 19. However, in the church, I desire to speak five words with my mind mm. so that I may instruct others also rather than 10,000 in a tongue. And you see the word church there, right? And the word church there is the ecclesia that Paul uses throughout 1 Corinthians. However, in the church, I desire to speak five words. And the assumption in that sentence is that in the church is in the gathered body. So Paul has, at this point, he's moved beyond arguing Mm. in favor of a definition of church. And now he assumes that his readers know that when he says church, he's talking about the gathered body of believers. So something I didn't say in the sermon this morning that perhaps Mm. I should have was when, especially in 1 Corinthians, we're reading about the church and we're looking at the church it is possible to be the church without being in a church building all the time with a bunch of other church people, mm-hmm. right? We are always the church, right? But it is not possible to be the church without ever gathering with the body. Um, to be part of mm-hmm. Christ's church is to gather with the saints. Uh, there's no way around that. And so Paul says, in the church, I desire to edify. In the church, I desire to edify. In the oh, church, yeah. I desire to edify. Yeah. Like to be part of the church is to gather for the purpose of edifying other believers. If we're not doing that, we're not part of the church, which means we're not in salvation, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that was interesting. I didn't get to it in the sermon this morning, yeah. but that is part of the passage here. Oh. That is that is one of those things that you can easily gloss over mm-hmm. without recognizing. That's interesting, yeah. That that throws a, a wrench in a lot of our uh, live stream churches these days. And, yeah, and metaverse. <laughs> the metaverse. So oh, there yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, so so what you're saying is Paul wouldn't really be into this idea of us putting a headset on and going to church <coughs> on on Sunday morning in the in in Decentraland. No, he would say, Why don't you go the whole way and emasculate yourselves? Mm. Mm. That's a little different. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. He would probably use language that strong, though. Sure. I mean, I imagine... So well, it was something like, so what, important. What, what yeah. do you mean you're not gathering? Right. What, <laughs> yeah. He, I wouldn't even jive in the first century. They'd be like, what the... What? <laughs> yeah, this is... It's going to be... I mean, I guess it is... On this episode, <laughs> I was going to say it's going to be an episode we have to cover. Here it is. The, <laughs> the Metaverse Church. Yeah. I remember <laughs> when Second Life like got big and stuff, you know, there were churches like building little churches in Second Life. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. That was like the first version of like Metaverse. Second Life. Mm-hmm. And you create a little character, you go over there, you do some stuff. And, wow. Yeah. And so. so we know, I mean, just from what, what we're saying, based off of this passage, this isn't even going to other areas of scripture, but uh, we know that you need to be gathered together physically. I think so. Um, what what options do we have, like as far as us as a church, as the gathered church or as the scattered church, to 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 participate in these types of things? Is it wrong for us to? To have a, a church service at all. What if what if we do two <coughs> church services? We gather in the morning and then and then in the evening there's there's the digital church gathering. Fine. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Not the actual gathering though. It's just something else? Or yeah. what would you categorize uh, that as? I'm, as long as we're not neglecting the gathering together of ourselves. Right. I don't think there's a problem with doing extra stuff. Sure. Right. Sure. I think I think that's gonna as it unfolds, it's gonna it's gonna create a lot of complications, but it's also gonna unfold a lot of opportunities. Well, yeah, there's there's gonna be need to to 
for Christians to be in metaverse sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. And then connecting those people with real churches. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And will there be a speaking in tongues in the in the metaverse church? Well, probably there'll be some computer algorithm that determines, <laughs> you know, the the syllables that are coming out of your mouth. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! You just you just talked about there being an interpreter, like in the metaverse. Like we're gonna go to the the Douglas yeah. Reformed Church on Decentraland to to get to the interpreter inside the church. That's a computer program. It's a computer program. <laughs> And if you have the, if you have the update, excuse me, if you pay for the update, you, you, pay for the you, you can know what's being said too. It's like Scientology. 3.02 ETH, please. What? <laughs> Sorry, it's just having a moment. <laughs> you just talk about crypto right in the middle of our episode? I mean, it's very fitting if we're talking about the metaverse. Uh-huh. Essential. Yeah. Nice. Well played. <laughs> You're just trying to up the value of your stocks. That's all you're trying to do. <laughs> Every word counts. <laughs> is that is that part of like if I speak it in love, if I talk about the 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 love of, of cryptocurrency that <laughs> Paul would find it fitting? <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't record these on Sunday nights. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I like verse 18. <coughs> 18. Yeah, Paul, I think, just, Paul just says, I, I thank God I'd speak in tongues more than you all. I, what well, he is, just throws that in there. What a <laughs> random thought. And, and like, of course I know this gift is legitimate. <laughs> I do it more than all of you. <laughs> Seems like he's boasting a little bit there. Right? He is. But then he's like, but I desire to speak just five words with my mind. Like, that would be better. That's interesting, man. Like, he's addressing an, an entire congregation. Mm-hmm. And he just looks at him and says, I'm glad I speak more tongues than all of you. Like, geez. All right. And he's not just talking about languages. Yeah. Like, it's some intelligent thing. Because Paul used a totally different word to refer to languages. Right. Um, did, did the, uh, what was it? I'm supposed to say it confidently here. Glossy. Um, glossy pictures. Did he, did he interchange the, the word used in any of these words? Did he use, uh, phone at all? He didn't use phone to refer to tongues. He okay. used phone to refer to languages and he used glossy to refer to tongues every time. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, the only time he used phone was in his illustration about human languages and them having meaning. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's that's pretty telling. I, I would I would be curious with with even like this this chapter, like this just a sit down with a brother. And I don't I'm not talking about some a wacky charismatic mm-hmm. that goes off the wall, but some like a sound brother. Yeah. And see what do you have to say? Like there's there's not a lot of confusion here. Even even if you don't look at the Greek, um, yeah, the English translates this passage really well. Right. Yeah. Right. And there was, I'd have to skim over it, but there's even a part where he had mentioned um, something that it was unintelligible uh, for people around him. Something along those lines. Mm. And, and that's what I mean is like the, the English translation of this chapter doesn't leave room for interpreting this tongue gift as something that's chaotic preaching yeah. or yeah, only, yeah, something chaotic. Um, it's a, it's a gift. Mm-hmm. We, <coughs> we accept and herald that as a truth. And, mm-hmm. and like we say with, you know, other gifts of the spirit or even not trying to, control the gathering as we've gotten into the habit of doing in our mm-hmm. churches today like if if someone shows up in our gathering and and they actually have this gift of speaking in tongues and 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 there is an interpreter, interpreter present bring it bring yeah. it yeah. let us say what you have to say for the edification of the body yeah yeah, yeah that's it um the reformers 
they uh, believe that these were legitimate gifts. Mm -hmm. uh, I think about Luther's 95 Theses, right? Mm. In his 95 Theses, he says, we affirm all the gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as legitimate for the church. Mm. In his 95 just Theses. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. You're just like, yeah, of course. Right. Um, I think we have problems with it today because, and, and I've been thinking about this more and more because you raised a question to me about uh, cessationism versus like hard cessationism versus mm -hmm. continuationism. You posed a question to me uh, that caused me to really think about it. Um, and John MacArthur says a lot about the difference between like cessationism and hard cessationism, even if he doesn't use those, those terms, mm -hmm. right? Uh, calling certain gifts, and he would classify those in 1 Corinthians 12. In fact, he does as apostolic sign gifts meant All for the right. apostle, right? Um, so in thinking about that, I was like, do we really have to draw those distinctions like are those biblical distinctions or are those distinctions that we've created in our own academic system sure and i think i think they're distinctions that we've created in our own academic system whereas we don't have to say anything has ceased and maybe we shouldn't be cessationists or continuationists just recognize that when gifts are given they're given for the edification of the church according to the will of the holy spirit mm -hmm. and just leave it at that Gifts. <laughs> Just Gifts. that. <laughs> you gotta have the T. Gifts. Yeah. Tss. I was trying to do an IST, a cessationist. Oh. Not a cessationist. We're, a we're just a gifts. -sist. <laughs> <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Giftsism. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I, like, I like that third option. I do too. And I really love academia. Yeah. Um, if I were to pick a religion other than Christianity, it would be academia. <laughs> it is a religion. Yeah, it can be. Uh, yeah. No, it is. Is just is. through and through. So almost. Are yeah. you are you committing idolatry yeah. when when you go off to your seminaries and? No, but you are when you make that your entire life, mm. right? Mm. And when you give in, like um, instead of operating by Christian principles and concepts operating by the principles and concepts and philosophies of academia, right? Mm. Well, the Christian way is actually better than academia, which is why it's important for us to homeschool our children, yeah. right? Uh, because as soon as, even, even if you plug in your children to a Christian school, there's a philosophy being headed, handed down to them by a, a private school board that right. may or may not be actually Christian, right? And... It, so-called public school, which is a state school. Actually, it's not actually a public school. It's a state school. Oh, yeah. You put your children in a state school. It's the philosophy, the religion of the state being handed down to them. All school is religious, right? There, there is no Christian philosophy coming down to your children in, in public schools. Uh, no, not in most cases, I don't think. Um, you go off to college, right? Plug into a secular university. Secular university, mm -hmm. right? What's being handed down to you? The religion of the heathen nations. Right. Right? This is why it's important, even in higher education, to plug into a Christian school that is sincerely Christian, if you're going to go that route. Mm -hmm. Sincerely Christian, that is handing down a Christian worldview to its students. Um, so... Oklahoma Baptist University. No, they're not paying me for this, right? When I plugged into Oklahoma Baptist University and I started going there, we read this book that was called, and it threw me off because of the title, <coughs> Christian Liberal Arts Education. Hmm. I saw the word liberal and I was like, <laughs> what? where am I? Where, what happened? <laughs> this is a Southern Baptist University. <laughs> no. Um, but then I learned what liberal arts actually means, right? right? And it doesn't mean the school is liberal, politically speaking. Mm -hmm. It does mean that they are uh, teaching uh, a well-rounded, teaching multiple points of view, right? Which is good. Mm -hmm. um, that they are teaching their students how to think rather than just trying to brainwash them. Right. And Oklahoma Baptist University was my first experience with that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, so kudos to Oklahoma Baptist University. That was awesome. Yeah. Right? Growing up, I didn't have that. But when we homeschool our children and we use classical education mm -hmm. platform to educate our children, we give them that in the home. 
And then we work through with them, like, this is how we reason. This is how we philosophize. This is how we look at history. Absolutely. Um, this, is, this is how we do science. The whole point of doing science is questioning everything. Like, that's how you do science. Right. But that's not how they teach science, right? But that's how you do science. You question everything. You come up with hypotheses and you test those. Occur- the scientific method philosophy is the same way. Mm-hmm. Question everything we we learn much more by questioning everything than we do just being brainwashed mm-hmm. uh, that's that's why in today's society people are probably a little not as intelligent as people were a hundred years before us right right I mean when you're brainwashed you're just regurgitating information that's been stuffed inside your head that's right um, which when you are talking about a yeah, again, I do the air quote Christian upbringing of, of something that, that you're isolated in this worldview and you know no other. You don't know how to rationalize mm-hmm. reason or even understand why it's good. Um, then, yeah, you come out regurgitating what you have. Yeah. Well, when in high school, I had a biology teacher who had to teach evolution. He himself was a Christian, though wasn't able to say that in the classroom mm. and wasn't able to teach any other perspective because these were the chains that were put on him by the state. Jeez. Right? He didn't want to teach it, but he had to. Had to teach it and had to teach it as truth. As truth, even though he didn't himself believe it. Jeez. It's oh, crazy. Goodness. Right? Mm. Mm. That's but that's the society we live in. That is. I don't undone. even know how we got on that rabbit trail. Um, I think I think this is we should just call this episode Rabbit Trails. <laughs> Rabbit Trails. Happy Trails. Happy Trails. Oh no, because then people think it's the last episode or something. It's like <laughs> that's like a title you give to the very last episode. It's, it's been nice knowing you guys. Um, I'll talk to you tomorrow, Mom. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I, I like rabbit trails. I think that's one of the great things about Black Top the Pulpit podcast. Ra- rabbit trails are fun. Definitely not doing rabbit trails on Sunday morning. No, that's dangerous. Yeah, but Don't want to do that. No, podcast episodes are a good place to do that. That that's for the, the those those folks that you know get in the pulpit on Sunday morning and say, "Hmm, what am I going to teach on today?" <laughs> Read the passage and talk about something not even related. Oh man, too many places. Too many places to talk about upbringings. I mean, my goodness, how many how many people have been exposed to this? Like, again, we talk about different religions. I I, I won't ostracize that badly. We'll just say how many people have have been exposed to that as Christianity, and you go into this place and you hear. This dude get up and just say what he feels is on his heart that morning. And it's totally worthless. Oh, man. Um, just a waste of time. Yeah. It's like speaking in tongues. <laughs> Didn't well, benefit funny. him uh, or the congregation. There is a reason so many people feel like going to the gathering, going to church, mm. isn't worth their time. Because in most not. cases, it's not. <laughs> right. No joke. Because there's not expository teaching. You're not actually growing in the faith. You're just hearing some guy say this almost the same thing he said last week and the week before that. And it sounds like a broken record. Now, the scriptures are infinitely deep. Right. If God is infinite, we will never run out of new things to talk about. Right. And I think about this every time I'm preparing a sermon, right? This could be the only time in my life I preach this text because there's mm. so much Bible to teach. Mm-hmm. This could be the only time I teach what I'm teaching today. Right. right. Um, and the same principles may come up elsewhere in Scripture, right? But with 66 books, it takes me more than a year to walk through each one. Mm-hmm. Um, and and just thinking about that, like it would take me, it would take me 75 years or more to walk through the entire Bible. I don't have that much time on Earth. How do these people keep returning to the same passages over and over and over sure. again throughout their ministry? Like that right. just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, because there's always there's always something you haven't preached yet. Right, there has to be. If there's not, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, um, like all of your theology probably <laughs> you're stuck in one spot of the Bible. Probably, <laughs> you yeah. got 
You got, got your hobby horse that you're not going to kick out of the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, no, force yourself to go to the next passage. Yeah. And then the next passage, then when you finish that book, start a book you haven't, you haven't preached yet or studied yet. And man, if you hit a passage that you just don't know what to say, like, there's your passion. Stay in it and read and study. <laughs> there's a lot to say about it. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, there's there's been... Um, I, I I don't want this to sound it's not and not at all boasting. I, um, I'm trying to think of how I'm tr- trying to say this. There, there's been there's been passages um, that I I didn't teach on that I I was doing I was going through a book of the yeah, Bible or whatever sure. and I, I just didn't because I was like it's too, uh, I don't know this is too big for me yeah yeah and I just I just I said it I I, I didn't even hide it I just said hey like this is I I, I I'm don't not want it for this one. Yeah. yeah, this is where we're at, and I'm not preaching it. <laughs> we're going to skip forward because I just don't, I don't, I don't understand, or I don't, I don't know for sure where I land or how I want to, mm. you know, like what, where's the truth here? Yeah, so yeah. I've I've been there too, um, but there's so much to say in, in every passage, like you're saying, you go through. Um, we don't need oh man, in these places too, where it's just like repetition of the same words in the same setting. Like, you know, like you say, you know, it's like it's just emotional words and kind of, kind of trying to get people engaged in what you're doing and, and where you are by just kind of pulling emotional strings in their hearts and, you know, maybe crying a little bit and stuff like that. It's just so deplorable because we have the riches of God's word <coughs> right here before us. And and then he equips men everywhere mm-hmm. to to teach what's here, what's been preserved for us, and then to 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 babble like speaking in tongues, mm-hmm. but you are speaking in an actual language, and just to babble, which is useless, mm-hmm. doesn't build you up or anybody yeah. else. You're just talking nonsense, yeah. trying to so get re- people emotional. Yeah, incoherent, repetitive babbling doesn't profit anyone. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you're in a church where that happens regularly, preachers will have off days. Don't judge them based on an off day. <laughs> right. right? They'll have off days, <laughs> no doubt. Don't judge them based on that. But if it's happening regularly, yeah, might want to you might want to look for for somewhere else to be somewhere that's going to be profitable. Right. If you're in a place that always appeals to flattery, mm. and like that's what's going on all the time, you might want to find somewhere else that's a that's a mode of manipulation. Right. People are are heavy flatterers. Be mm-hmm. a little, be at least a little skeptical, right? right? Um, if you're in a place where it's all about sensationalism, mm. um, feel goodness, new stuff all the time, um, yeah, it's probably not the best place to be either. Uh, God's word doesn't really change that much. You know, sensationalism is kind of bad for Christianity. <laughs> um, and if you're in a place that's always about condemnation and judging people and always harking on the same sins over and over again, well, you probably have a preacher who's himself living in sin and trying to, trying not to see it. Oh so, man, get out of there too. <laughs> <laughs> Just identified a, a, a problem there because mm-hmm. there, there there are a lot of those places so that we yeah. we see that a lot and. Um, just for the sake of me not having firsthand knowledge, I won't, I won't identify any of them here. Um, but I have, I have talked to many people who have issues with those like over judgmental churches. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I wrestle too. Like when I hear things like that, I, I take that slow when it's a critique of others, because we know that like, as far as, as the world's concerned, like we are judgy people and there I go doing my air quotes again. Sure. Um, yeah. I'm but, not afraid to identify sin, but I yeah. don't condemn people because of their sin. Right. 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 So there's that distinguishment. We don't ignore sin and we don't dimin- d- diminish it or make it seem <coughs> insignificant. Um, but yeah, so you identified uh, a- a- an issue likely with the actual leaders of some of these ministries being that if, if they're being hard on, on sin, just calling people out all the time in unloving ways, and and just that's that's their focus of their ministry. They're probably themselves yep. living that way. Yeah. Well, and you make a fair point there, right? In unloving way. Yeah. So we do have to address sin or concerns that we have, but Jesus gave us a way to do that. Yeah. And it wasn't from the pulpit. Right. <laughs> it was go to the brother you see who is in sin. 
Yep. And talk with him about your sin. If he repents, you have won your brother. Yeah. Which is the goal. Which is the goal. To win your brother. Yep. Not to condemn him. Right. To win him. Uh, to, to edify him. Like yep. even when we address sin, the goal is edification, not condemnation. That's yeah. That's it. Yeah. Hey, chapter 13. Edification. <laughs> Love, chapter 13, 14. Doing things to edify our brothers. And, and that being the, the function of, of what we're doing as <coughs> gathered believers. Hmm. Uh, bearing each other's burdens. Can't do that digitally. Um, not going to no. go down that rabbit trail again. No, you can't but, do that digitally. <laughs> you can't. You can't make sure your brothers are fed mm. well if you're just living in a digital world. Yeah, uh, you can philosophize in a digital world. You can do. You can you can give into the. You can give into the religion of ivory church Christianity, ivory tower Christianity. Mm. You can do that digitally. Um, but you cannot be the church digitally. Right. Right? You can't really care for one another. You can't be with the sick. Uh, you can't experience healing. Mm. Um, you, you don't have that emotional and spiritual attachment online that you do in real life. You just can't get there. Hmm. Yeah. Which might be why so many people want that instead. Because I don't really want to get close to people anymore. Sure. I understand that. It's dangerous, but I understand it. Not wanting to be close to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <coughs> I would be curious to know how many people struggle with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'm, I was one of them, right? Yeah. Um, my experiences in church weren't that great growing up. <laughs> my experiences in church as an adult hadn't been that great so far. <laughs> <As an adult. laughs> so you can really resonate really with I can resonate everybody with, else with, with everybody man um, but for some reason every time I, I, I have thought about forsaking the church the Holy Spirit just doesn't let me do it Yeah, as much as I want especially this last time like what happened to T-Cats mm. and I was like oh, that's the last time I yeah. said, I'm not going to let that happen again right um, and I was there, man. I was there ready to forsake the church and forsake everything. And uh, the Holy Spirit just didn't let it mm. happen. Mm. Like, that's what he does. So, yeah, I resonate. Uh, people who have been burned by the church, that's, that's my whole life right there. Or churches. Yeah. Churches, yeah. 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 Sadly, yeah, I mean, your, your situations, I, I've talked to you about numerous ones, not just T-Cats, but numerous ones even preceding that like i think you've been through more than the average person has probably because you you just you chose a life of ministry probably right? because i chose a life of ministry <laughs> and then and then i also chose that i wasn't going to compromise on the word of god right so that's been, and that's a big right. part of it too when you choose not to compromise on the word of god especially when um people get their toes stepped on because the word of god is preached rather than their ears tickled yeah uh, that has a lot to do with it yeah so i would be curious if we never like actually like prod action but just for the sake of curiosity if nothing else if if you're listening and and you've you've been burned by you know churches or ministry that whether it's judgmentalism or fakeness or whatever this, this is not like a, a proposal to like start bad mouthing churches right. and stuff this, like that. This is but not this is not church roast hour. No, like, not uh, church we, roast hour. But we want to we want to offer our forgiveness. Yeah, uh, and our condolences. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. And we, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> engage engage it in this wherever you're listening. Yeah. You know, YouTube or you know Facebook or whatever, and 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 just say, hey, you know what? I resonated with uh, of that issue because I I've had those types of issues in my past and. And we would like to dialogue in, in those outside of, you know, even what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. I always think when we're recording, too, like, it'd be cool to, like, I don't know, do some live Q&A somehow and yeah. kind of engage with people. But even post-recording, like, if you're listening to this, like, yeah. like we, yeah, we, we want to yeah. chat. Yeah, it's we'll like engage fun you. stuff to talk we'll about. We'll engage you in the comments. And uh, we definitely, especially if you're here in the Douglas area yeah. or hereabouts, 
um, we want to do everything we can to to help you help you heal. Like right, uh, that's no joke, and and it's not because it's not just because like the nature of the church is somehow such that no matter how you get involved, you're going to get burned or whatever. No, it's just because people are sinful riches. Right. And you get a group of sinners together. They're going to act like sinners and they're going to, they're going to burn people. And that's why we're interested in regenerate church membership. Mm -hmm. Um, That's why we're interested in covenant theology. Uh, That's why we want to say God is, God is sovereign despite the way people who claim to be Christians act. Right. Um, we recognize that people are sinners. Uh, we're not. We're not going to condemn you. Uh, we are going to. We are going to. We are going to love you. That's right. In a very real, sincere way to to edify you. Um, and hopefully, you come and you're interested in edifying the body too. Like that's what we want. Absolutely. That's the kind of religion we're interested in. Absolutely. And and there there's no off topics. Like there nothing's off the table when it comes to like hey. I'm trying to understand this or, or I've been told this, but I don't, I don't believe it or it seems controversial or it seems unloving. Like bring the questions, bring the challenges. Like we are, we are open books, both of us, when it comes to like teaching positions, theology, like there's sexuality, there's sexuality, uh, marriage and parenting and, and every aspect of, of life and, and doctrine. So th- th- this is like, you can have a thought, um, man, should, we, <laughs> should, I, should I bring up Casino del Sol? <laughs> oh yeah, you just went to the casino. So, You're just, the pastor of a church, bro. You go to casinos, ruining your witness. So we talk about being judgmental, right? Again, <laughs> not not diminishing the sin at all, because it's it's just identifying what actually is sin and not doing it. You know. So yeah, I, I was at a casino with my wife and 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 some family members, and we had a we had a good good time. It was, it was a relaxing couple of nights and. You know, we swam, and again, like, what, what's sin, what's not? We had, you know, we had a few, few beverages. Oh, oh. oh my gosh, you know, and, and yeah, just had a good time. So uh, that's what I'm just saying is we. Yeah, I recently heard a, a preacher. Recently, I mean, within the last couple of weeks. He said, uh, he was talking about ruining your witness, mm. and he said. Uh, the company you keep reveals exactly the kind of person you are. If you hang out with sinners, you're probably a sinner too. Oh, you, something to this my. effect, right? If you hang out with sinners, you're probably a sinner too. You probably need to get into church and stop hanging out with sinners. Oh. And if you're a Christian, uh, you should be hanging out with only with people who are going to help you act more Christian and do what's good and not what's wrong. It's, you know, something to that effect. Right? Jeez. So my thought was, Jesus, sinner, <laughs> came eating and drinking, yeah, dining in tax collectors' home, oh. called a ragtag group of fishermen and others, who probably had mouths of sailors to follow. Oh him, yeah, right, no doubt. That's the company Jesus kept. Yeah. Am I not to be like him? Yeah. No, Jesus was a special... Uh, ex- he was God. <laughs> All right, there is that. Here's but an it's exception. Like, but it's like, dude, if I can't go to work because I'm going to be around sinners at work, there's something messed up about that. Right. I'm grounded with the church body. Right. Grounded with the church body. But when I'm out about my week, I should be around sinners. Right. Uh, I should be... I should be coming, not giving myself over to sin, but coming to their their level. That's what Paul has already addressed in First Corinthians. I feel uh-huh. like that that teaching was probably well intentioned. Just probably was it even an ex, an exposition of, of a passage? Because I feel like that's an error somebody made in something that he was saying mm-hmm. because he was having an opinion on something. Probably because um, <coughs> I think of you know like. Where where's the well intention there? Well, you know, uh, bad what is it? Bad company corrupts good morals. Something along those lines. Something. Proverbs and stuff like that. So so the idea, you understand that you know if if, mm-hmm. if you're always around a certain type of people, you're more inclined to be like them. Right. Um, that's that's I mean not only biblical knowledge but common knowledge too. There's common um, sense. Yeah. Man, if you're not living with the 
people that were to love mm-hmm. to show the the hope the gospel to well furthermore if i can't be around any sinners then what am i doing here <laughs> <laughs> went to the casino <laughs> What are you doing here? Uh, I meant, I meant, I thought you meant here, like in this den. And I'd say, yeah. What are you doing here? Because you're among sinners. <laughs> How can you be the pastor of a church and never engage sinners? Right. Uh, well, you know, what's more sinful about my trip to a casino is I didn't go there with some evangelistic mission. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just went there to relax because it. Has been a busy year with your wife. With my wife. How dare you? I don't know, but yeah, that that's all to say. Um, sin is serious. Sin kills. Sin crucified or no? Jesus died for sin to pay for sin. Um, so it's it's serious, and we we don't downplay it at all. But we do acknowledge that there's way too much. That's called sin that isn't, and the sin that even is sin is dealt with so horribly, unloving. Yeah. Like go back to the First Corinthians thirteen and fourteen and mm-hmm. see how Paul talks about how we're supposed to love each mm-hmm. other, and and if the whole point of, of correction is restoration and love and being unified to each other, then that's that's a good thing. And mm-hmm. then if we're wrong about the things that we call out. Um, that's identifiable too. And that's why when it comes to the importance of, well, what's sin and what isn't, if, if you're saying that there's a whole lot of things that people call sin that isn't, well, that's why we're a plurality of elders in this church because we're not going to have one man calling the shots and saying, oh, this, right. is, this is what I believe and this is the way it is. Right. We challenge and, and edify each other as well. And as, and as long as as long as everybody is sincerely pursuing Christ, there won't be any problems in that. Right. Like, like if you have an elder who's wrong about something he's calling sin and another elder who challenges that and he just sincerely looks at scripture and is like, Hey, you're right. Yeah. Problem solved. Like it's done. Yeah. There's no big church controversy, no no church split, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> <coughs> right? As long as people are just sincerely following Jesus. Yeah. He isn't being asked to step down as an elder because, no, he's sincerely following Jesus. Like, elders can be wrong. Yeah. <gasps> Errant elders? Yep. <laughs> Repent and move on. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Huh? Yeah. Errant elders. It's important. It's yeah. important for people to know. Uh, the Pope isn't perfect either. He poops. <laughs> Come on now. He poops just like everybody else. <laughs> better title. That's a better title. <laughs> <coughs> on that note, I think it's probably the end of our episode. <laughs> About poops. Perfect. Yeah. Well, this has been Blacktop Pulpit. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. I don't think I, I mentioned who we were at the beginning. Uh, I'm Andrew. No. And we're with Ken and we are elders of Douglas Reform Church. And we, man, we hope to see you soon. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs>